All right, guys, we are live with episode 113. Didn't screw it up. <laughs> Beastly Thoughts Live. Welcome, you, everybody. I hope you guys had an awesome week. I'm really excited to talk a little bit about E3. We got the first two E3 conferences, right? Or did we only get one today? We got one so far. The next one will be one at today. 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern, which will be yep. best. I want to do a little speculating about what we're going to see over on PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, we, we're going to talk about what we've been playing. We had a lot to talk about today. E3, it's like Christmas for gamers, right? Yes, it is. Absolutely. <laughs> it's like it's more like, though, finding out what you're going to get for Christmas. What you got to spend. But not being able to open anything. <laughs> Wait two I, I more guess, years for this. Yeah. I guess E3, E3 yeah. has different meanings to different people. To, kid is, to kids, it's like Christmas. To parents, it's like a nightmare. Because they don't, they have no clue what's going to happen, and their kid comes running out of their room. Right. There's eight new games coming this year, and the parents are like, "Holy shit!" I, I've always loved E3 since I was a kid. Um, I remember when they first started them. I remember when Tokyo Game Show was a big thing, and uh, every year they come mm -hmm. around for me and my family. Now it's kind of like a holiday. Last year I took off for the whole week of E3 and stayed home. That's oh. right. I remember you did yeah. that. You didn't do it no, this not year. Not this year. This year, I, you know, I got to kind of manage my time a little bit better. I uh, I went to the Bahamas earlier this year. Went to Ohio, mm -hmm. and now I'm kind of just biding my time and, and planning it out a little bit smoother. I want to just yep. blow my load before, you know, before I get to the <laughs> end of the year. I need to have a little bit more time left, you know. But, yeah, EA's E3 conference happened earlier today, uh, three hours ago at 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern. And I watched it. Briar, you didn't get a chance to see it, but you did watch some of their uh, – some of the yeah, I watched all the videos that came out of it, and I read a couple of write-ups about it. But I didn't get to watch it live. I was okay. I was under my desk doing cable management. Oh, okay. <laughs> Normally, when I'm under the desk, my wife is sitting at it. All right, but uh, anyway, we're going to talk. Yeah, you got that right. Bring what? a little bit of freaky oh, deaky. My... I forgot, Robbie's only 14. I'm sorry. Um, so just we're, we're going to talk about what we've been playing, and uh, what have you guys been playing this week? Because last week it was a little a little dead, I guess. A little slow for us as far as the games we were playing. I had to switch it up a little bit. Robbie, what have you been up to? Playing the waiting game till E3, and now uh, E3's <laughs> here. That's all I've really been playing, honestly. Yeah, I've just been so pumped for E3, and now it's here. Even if the EA conference wasn't the greatest, we'll get into it. But I'm still so excited for the tonight, and then tomorrow's going to be awesome. Okay. Well, there's nothing wrong with waiting. You've played enough games this year. You could probably wait till the end of the year, and you'd probably play right? a lot more games than the average gamer. What about you, Brian? What have you been up to? I know Destiny's on that palette. Of course, Destiny's on the palette. I've been uh, playing a ton of Destiny. I also finally picked up Uncharted 4, so I'm really excited to get into that. I haven't actually... I bought it like a week and a half ago. I still haven't opened it. Brian, you've got to get into it. Hold on, hold on, Robbie. I know. Just oh. don't sit it next to Far Cry 4, please. Right? That's the area yeah. of the room that you don't look at. Put it on top of the PlayStation 4. Okay? Uh, but what I've actually really been up to this week is like doing an office redesign, right? Is, uh, you know, I've got this office that. Uh, I make YouTube videos in, I stream in, and I also just play video games here for my own enjoyment. So I've been trying to set this thing up uh, to really suit my suit my needs much better than it was doing. So you can see, obviously, I got the green screen yeah, behind I like me. I also look, got a new man. desk. Yeah, I got a new desk. It's like a standing desk. So uh, while I'm working on videos or while I'm doing voiceover, I can be standing up instead of sitting down like all day long. Uh, and I'm really enjoying that, but it's been a, a lot more work than I anticipated, to be honest with you. I thought, you know, I'll put a day into it and then be done with the project until I get the next, you know, set of gear in. Uh, but really, it's been, you know, uh, cable management and rearranging things, learning how the lights work, learning, you know, getting the green screen set up just right. So it's it's been a lot of work, but it's been really interesting work. Like, it, it's fun to do, so... I've been I've been doing a lot of that this week. Well, I mean, some people do their gardening. Some people do, you know, just moving right. furniture, putting out wallpaper. You're doing the kind of stuff that I honestly have a passion for. Right. That is <laughs> like our, the fun stuff. That's our yeah. better homes and gardens, what you're doing right now. So, yeah, that's awesome. Totally. I, I can't wait. I'm yeah, I'm doing like a video series about it, too. So uh, the second video in that series will be out. It was supposed to get out today, but I just kind of ran out of time. So it'll probably go out tomorrow. Yeah, well, I love setup videos. This is going to be a busy week. I know, me too. <laughs> They're so good. I love them. This is going to be a busy week. This is E3 week, and, and more than likely, more likely than not, we're going to do videos that we probably haven't anticipated and have no clue we're going to be interested in until a couple right. of days from now. So just 
relax. Don't get too uh, hyped and, and too into things because you're going to have to pull back a little bit and make some videos on shit that we don't know. I promise you that. And so is there anything new in Destiny that you've been uh, enjoying or have you just been doing a lot of remodeling and uh, and, and I would say upgrading the uh, the game room? Um, it's mostly been upgrading. It's, uh, you know, I've been playing a lot and, uh, you know, like, uh, yesterday did a long run, uh, with actually Wilson, who's in chat right now, uh, of, of, uh, Trials of Osiris and had a great time doing that. Uh, but yeah, I've been spending a lot of time optimizing my setup for streaming because that's, you know, still a new thing for me, uh, trying to get everything working just as well as I can and, you know, making it, making well, it work. I, I look I look forward to uh, the finished product. Uh, you've always had some really awesome setups, and uh, I, I know this is going to be even more awesome than the previous. Now, when it comes to what I've been playing, last week I, I finished playing uh, Alien Isolation on PS4. I talked about that briefly. Everybody's like, what the fuck is he talking about? And I went and bought uh, Odin Sphere Leaf, Leaf for Seer, which is a very strange name. Odin Sphere is a game that came out on the PlayStation 2 years ago as an Atlas game. It was hand-drawn. And uh, they remastered it, added new uh, bosses and characters and, and elements to the story. And uh, it re-released on PlayStation 4 on the 7th. And uh, I've been playing that since then. Well, actually, since the 9th, I've been playing it. And I've been putting in a lot of hours. And my God, this game is its a must-play game. Uh, there's so much to this game. The story is incredible. The voice acting, of course, is really, really good. If you're an anime fan, you'll instantly love this game. Uh, they've added so much to this game versus the original. It's a side-scrolling, what we consider beat-em-up, but it does have elements of RPG. There's crafting elements. Uh, you can actually create uh, potions and magical spells by planting seeds in the ground. You find seeds, you plant them, and then you basically nourish the seed. You watch it grow in front of you, and then a particular fruit will grow from it. Boom, you use the fruit for whatever kind of ability that uh, that fruit may have. It's just so many things going on. And there's, believe it or not, five different stories in the game. I'm, I've just finished the first one, and it took 11 hours Wow! for the very first story. So it's a, and believe it or not, the size of the file, which kind of irked me because the game was a full price game. It was $59.99. When I downloaded the full game, it was three and a half gigs. I was like, holy shit, three and a half gigs. But my wife and I last night finally finished the very first characters. Uh, and it took her, I think, 13 hours. It took me 11 hours. And now we're moving on to the second. So there's tons of replayability. Uh, they added all kinds of new online modes and kind of horde modes, things that didn't exist back in, in PlayStation 2 days, mm -hmm. to kind of add new replayability to this game. But it's called Odin Spear. The demo is available on the PlayStation <clears throat> Store. So anybody out there with a PS4, this is a PlayStation exclusive, unfortunately. It's on PS4. Oh. I, believe it's, I believe it's on a PlayStation Vita as well. It's kind of a never... rare game on PS2, it too, is. isn't it? It's like I it's hard it. to find. The people yeah, have, like it's kind of one of those famous games where everybody's like, you got to check it out if you can find a copy. It's well, nice see, the to thing hear is, that. Uh, a friend of mine came down from New York two weeks ago, or almost two weeks ago, and he hung out with me and my wife, and I we played the demo, and he had never had a chance to play it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we grew up together down here in Georgia playing it. He played the demo, and he was really upset that he never had a chance to play it. And I have the the actual PlayStation Two physical copy that because I played it back then. So I understood exactly what a special game this was. Yeah. Uh, and if you guys like, check out the demo. That'll let you know right there if this is the kind of game for you. But it has tons of replayability. You can. I did a 300-hit combo on somebody. <laughs> I mean, you can do, like, Street Fighter moves in this game. They like. They said they've kind of added Mortal Kombat into the mix of the game because mm -hmm. initially there was just five or six different moves that each character had. There are literally 30 or 40 moves now. There's a huge skill tree reminiscent of Final Fantasy XII where oh, you damn. open it up and there's little balls and you just, boom, you unlock one. It's a new ability. You can uh, create your own custom move for it. Mm -hmm. So it's not just, you know, up and right or you can make your own. So and this thing's on PlayStation to... Store now? Yes, it's so good, Briar. It's yeah. really, really, and how much really, is it? really good. It's full price. It's fifty nine ninety nine. Fifty nine ninety nine. But it has, t I mean, like I said, I just got done with the very first character story and I've been, I've been going for 11 hours. And it's just tons and tons of fun. It's an incredible game. I will be reviewing that. And I'm sure it's going to be a much better game than my last review. But I'm liking it more now than the original. But the great thing about the PlayStation 4 version is that they actually included the original classic on there as well. Oh, so really? if you ever want cool. Yeah, but some of the big differences in this one and the, uh, the original is that the original had major issues with frame rate. 
because they were trying to do so much with all the sprites, plus all the characters are hand drawn that yeah. sometimes the game would get down to 15, 20 frames per second. That was a problem with the PlayStation 2 as well. Is it, you know, you it had big issues. Boss we're having Skype issues, aren't we? Uh, that was a problem with the PlayStation 2 is it had issues with 2D games. It just wasn't yeah, that Yeah, yeah, it had major, major games. problems. Yeah. The great thing about it is now it's a full 60 frames per second, a constant 60. And, uh, if you go back to the classic mode, you will see those frame dips. They actually put the original classic on there without all the new moves, without all the new enemies. The new enemies look astounding. You know, they've kind of added this 2.5D element to some of the newer enemies and the newer animations. It's just a great game, and uh, I, I implore anybody out there who has a history of someone's, someone's hitting the keyboard with a hammer. Um, Sorry. But no problem. Uh, if, if you have a history of 2D games that you actually really enjoy, I would implore you to check it out. It's on PlayStation, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita. It's called Odin Spear. Oh, it's on Vita? Leafs. Yes. Oh, and I, did, I, I didn't download it. Now, I was thinking about it. It better be cross-play. It better be cross-buy because if it's yeah. not, I'm going to lose my mind. But definitely check it out. It's I'm always Odin looking Spear. for a reason to play something on my Vita, man. I love that yeah. hardware so yeah, much. And I've never no got a reason, reason to play it. Yeah, well, if this is on Vita, I will definitely be breaking my Vita out. Uh, believe it or not, last week I went and bought uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Declassified on the Vita. Ooh, oh, bad that move. is not a good game. Bad move. <laughs> yeah, that's well, a oh, oh. Yeah, I knew it was a bad move. I went into my, my local area pawn shop, and I saw it there, and I got it for just a couple of dollars. Uh, it, it's one of those games that, you know, historically is so bad that you just have to own it. I went to the multiplayer map and I walked around and it just just looking at it, I turned it off and never even finished the match. So. <laughs> just turned it off. Yeah, it's one of those games, man. It's, it's bullshit. It's a bad game. It's a game, bad game. That uh, game could have that game could have saved the Vita. It really could have if they put a real talented developer behind it, it and made Call of Duty. If they just ported Black Ops Two to it, it would have been a big deal. Yeah. And that was my week in gaming, guys. Cool. All right, let's talk about EA because they just had their press conference. Uh, you guys watched it. I didn't watch it live, but I've gone through and checked out some of the videos. Uh, I wanted to start off with Titanfall. Can we start off with yes. Titanfall too? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, to me, absolutely. it's the most exciting thing EA's got to show. I know a lot of people are going to be excited about Battlefield One, but for me, Titanfall Two is the thing. It looks great. I'm really excited to hear that there's like a real story to it. Like they had a little trailer, and it got me instantly amped up to play Titanfall Two. Like, it, it did. That campaign like, trailer was so yeah. good. It, it, yeah. it is, yeah. It, it really excited me as well. As somebody who initially wasn't in on the ground floor of the original Titanfall, now right. I, after having Titanfall and having both consoles, I'm super amped for it. It looks bigger, better, more exciting, more moves. The kind of shit that they showed in this trailer just hasn't been done before. Uh, and so I'm excited to see exactly where it goes. They show some single-player campaign, right? Right, which yeah. Is a, which is a, a phrase that, that game needs that Titanfall desperately. Works. It makes it a much better value. Uh, the, you know... The multiplayer definitely had a lack of depth, and we'll have to see if they can fix that for Titanfall 2. But seeing a single-player campaign almost makes it a must-buy for me because I know that I want to explore that world. I want to know more about that world. Ever since the trailer started showing up for Titanfall 1, I got excited to explore that world. It's just a cool yeah. sci-fi universe with all that movement and the mechs and everything. You know, we get swords this time with our mechs, man. Like, that looks cool. So I'm really actually... Like I'm, I'm getting pretty amped up for Titanfall too, and it's not that far away. Well, Absolutely. that's the that's one of the games they showed. One of the few games I should say that EA actually showed that was actually real gameplay, and that was exciting. They showed you know seamless integration of you running through the map, getting scooped up by your mech, yeah. and slammed into its chest during the and see this is what you're talking about, which I totally agree with. They're kind of breathing real life into this world. Now we're starting to understand that these mechs, the AI is so advanced that they're almost living. They're yeah. almost alive. Yeah. They, they'll talk to you and they'll protect you. They're almost, it's like the last guardian. You know, it's kind of like having one of those big, you know, squirrel dogs walking around with you. These guys are almost alive and that breathes a whole new degree of realism and breath into that world. Something we didn't yeah. get in part one. We didn't really know. So I'm anxious to finally see what Respawn's take is on this sci-fi world. I want to know if they can make it, you know, uh, uh, an engaging environment that we want to see more of, that we want to learn more of. Because games like Destiny, games like Mass Effect kind of have that. You know, people really want to dig deep and find out more about the lore. Titanfall's never had that because it didn't exist in the first place. And so this is kind of their first step into that direction. I think it's a great move. And I really, I'm really more excited, honestly, to see 
like I said, what they're going to do with the single player aspect of the game, because yeah. that's really going to be the deciding factor on what Respawn's initial idea was for this game. I, yeah, I really definitely. want I want a good multiplayer, though. I mean, <clears throat> that multiplayer was fun as hell to play. Like the movement, I, I still say they got the movement better than any game's done in since. Like that wall running, jumping. Now they got like a grappling hook. Like that stuff they nailed in the first Titanfall. The only thing that failed was the fact that you never felt like you were progressing toward anything. And now that you know, we 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 feel like we are used to that in games now. Like it feels like it's missing if it's not there in games now. Yeah. Uh, so there needs to be like a progression system. There needs to be unlockables. There needs to be like more stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. But I mean, it was the base gameplay was fun as hell. Now, now let me ask you a question because you undoubtedly played more Titanfall than the rest of us. Do you think they need to continue on the the path they were when it comes to AI bots, or do you think they should move away from that? I didn't like the AI, AI bots that much because it, it was boring to, to fight them. Fodder, yeah. yeah, they were just cannon fodder. It really it didn't mean anything. Uh, so I just. I'd rather they just keep it to uh, player versus player. Maybe have a game mode that has them in, and maybe have a game mode on smaller maps that doesn't have them in there. Well, they did mention that they were listening to the community, and so they made a big you know, humbug on stage about this. They said, we've been listening to the community, so we'd like to introduce the single-player campaign. So yep. the community was just as vocal about the AI bots as they were about the lack of a campaign. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they've listened to both aspects of the community, not just one. Uh, because Titanfall, for, for me, for the little bit of time I did play it, it felt really fun. Like you said, the, the, the way that the controls work, the guns, all that stuff felt seamless. Yeah. Uh, but there was at the time problems. Got, like a lot of the guns felt the same. A lot of the guns were just completely useless. There was clearly at launch, there was clearly one best gun that everybody was oh, using. Yeah. So yeah, they got a lot of work to do there, but. I'm excited for it. You want to talk about Battlefield 1 a little bit? Yeah, well, actually, let's go through just briefly and, and touch on some of the things that they talked about. Okay. Of course, they, of course yeah. it's... Yeah, get the hell out of here. Uh, <laughs> they, starting in order, they did Titanfall 2, which to me was probably the most exciting thing they showed. They went on to Madden 17. Uh, they showed a little bit of the gameplay of Madden 17, which to me looks like you know the previous Madden games. For me, I'm not the biggest football, basketball, sim, sports fan. So I wasn't super hyped about it. They did talk about the Madden competition that's taking place now and how it's been over a million players is down to the final eight. I was actually more excited to see who wins that than to look at the Madden game because the game just... Focus. Yeah, it's it's really, really, really sports focused. And for me, that's not why I play games. Uh, but moving on, they did touch on Mass Effect Andromeda. They kind of gave a little bit more of the backstory of Mass Effect, you know, traveling through space for, you know, some odd years, yeah. waking up, and, and the old uh, worlds have all died and gone away, and a whole new civilization and worlds have arisen, new planets and everything, and now you're like, the, yeah, you're the alien now, uh, there's new races and all this stuff, but they showed more behind the scenes of developers sitting at yeah. computers and, and kiosks, drawing pictures and stuff, stuff that they showed last year. And I'm thinking, it's been a whole year. You guys can't show us anything. They did show what I consider a vertical slice of what the game could look like. Well, they we're not expecting that game this year, right? Next no. year. Yeah, early. Yeah, Maybe I, next I year. Well, you got you to gotta look at how long it's been in development. It's been in development since 2013. Yeah, right but they've, they've had well-publicized problems in development. Well-publicized. Yeah, well, so, I mean, yeah, but, the fact that it's going slow... You know, we we all want a great game, right? We want a great Mass Effect game. I would rather game. that, yeah. I'd so, rather it be good than be rushed, you know? Yeah. If they rush it and, it and it lacks, you know, th th that quality of the previous games, even Part 3, then there's going to be a problem. Mass Effect is real to me. In my mind, Mass Effect stands alone side by side with things like Star Wars and Star Trek. It, it has its own lore and it has its own believable atmosphere. It's not like most games. You know, when you go there, you actually want to go to different planets and, and talk to these different races and right. see what's going on. That's that's the kind of worlds that they built with Mass Effect. But I would have liked to have seen more. Uh, and kind of keeping with the tropes of what EA has been doing here, most of their, their reveals were stuff that we knew about or uh, pre-rendered scenes, no real gameplay. Or yeah, behind that's what the I, I was getting that feeling. I, like like I said, I didn't watch the thing live, but I kept watch, looking at the, all the trailers, all the news stories, and there were some cool announcements. The originals program, they're really going to take a yeah. indie focus, yeah. you know, which I'm really excited for. I always like those smaller games. 
bite-sized chunk games. I really like that kind of stuff. But yeah, there wasn't much like there wasn't much to get super excited about. Yeah, I mean, the EA originals, I of course, I like my indies, and that's really what they're focused on. They did show a new indie that they're working on called Fee, uh, which, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a game. You know, it's nothing to be super excited about, if you ask me. And it also, there's nothing bad about it. Just for me, watching the trailer, it didn't grab me. Who knows? It might be one of my favorite games of all time. They showed, yeah. FIFA, they showed FIFA 17, The Journey. Which uh, <clears throat> they're trying to. Campaign now. What's with they're, that? <laughs> they're making FIFA into the Need for Speed. They want it to have its own storyline. Uh, they wanted to have a character that you you. I forget the guy's name because I forgot. Alex Hunter. Oh, I should have known. You'd know, Robbie. Yeah. Alex Hunter walked out on the stage and he said, "You don't know me yet, but you will." Then he went on this little short monologue about you know his his travels in the world of soccer. Then. They transition to the game, and of course, he's the character in the game. And you're going through this single-player campaign as him. And of course, instead of driving cars or in a boxing ring, you're kicking balls. And I know a lot of people who like kicking balls. So who knows? Uh, it might be good. It might not be. But I like to see when developers try new things uh, and, and take things in different directions. Sports games with single-player campaigns, it might scratch the itch of, of some players who don't traditionally play sports games. I don't. You won't catch me. I got NBA 2K16. It was free. Will I play it? Probably not. If it had a single-player campaign that you could get into and, and kind of flesh out and see something exciting, I probably would. So uh, this FIFA 17, the journey, I think is going to appeal to, to more than traditional uh, FIFA fans. I think it's a good FIFA's thing. FIFA's huge. Me. You know, FIFA's yeah, it's a the gigantic biggest sport. game. Yeah, It's the biggest sport on earth, but it's, it's probably not as big here as some of the other sports. But when it, when it comes to on the planet, of course, soccer is the number one sport. Uh, they did show some Star Wars stuff. Which did, they? Def- <sighs> did they? No, not really. No, they, <laughs> they talked so, about showing it. <laughs> they showed everything that already exists. They showed. Uh, the- I'll say what my problem with this is right now. As soon as Jade Raymond came out and said, we're doing a Battlefront sequel next year, and then we're doing Visceral Star Wars game, which won't be out until 2018, basically they were just giving release dates for unannounced games that haven't been announced yet. That was so frustrating to me. Like right. they just showed hey, more Amy, behind Amy. the scenes and they had nothing to show. Why are you having a conference and you have nothing to show? I don't Amy understand. Hennig, Amy Hennig talked for a minute. She went on Twitter and, and she made a tweet and she was like, so excited the new trailer is coming out. And Shuhei Yoshida was like, trailer. congratulations. And she was like, thanks. And I was like, Amy, I even tweeted Amy Hennig. I said, we would have liked to have seen something or got some kind of details. Well, it's not there yet. Really, they can't. We don't really know. We don't really know anything. So, what was the point? Of we know that Visceral should... Games is developing a Star Wars game that's coming out in 2018. That's all we know, so, really, right? Respawn, that sucks. Respawn's yeah. working on one too. I mean, yep. everybody's working on a Star Wars game. I love Bioware. Star Wars. Yeah, I love Star Wars. Uh, but I think Bioware is definitely working on one. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they are. What do you I'm think more that'll excited. Be? For- Knights of the Old Republic 3. <laughs> right? Please. Something amazing. Yeah, hey, I'm sure. If they made KOTOR 3, I would shit my pants. That would be, man, it would be a hell of a YouTube video. Uh, I, I mean, I love Knights of the Old Republic. It's one of those special games. Kind of like Odin Spear, believe it or not. You know, my wife's playing it now. And she's like in love with it. Now, I've been telling her about it for years, but she never wanted to go back to the PlayStation 2 and try it. Mm-hmm. And so now she gets to experience KOTOR. I would love a fucking remaster of Knights of the Old Republic, man. That would blow mine. I'd rather get a new one. Yeah, I would rather get a new one too. (laughs) I wouldn't mind getting a remaster of the old one either. But yeah, they didn't really show anything with Star Wars. And of course, they ended on Battlefield 1, which I got to say looks good. It looks looks real good. Yeah. But but guys, (laughs) guys, Battlefield 4 looked good. That's true. It looks good. good It (laughs) It looked fantastic. It's one of the best games I've ever seen as far as like graphics go. I mean, it looked stunning. Yeah. Great, uh, and so it's more Battlefield. I, I do look forward to trying out this old World War One, uh, mm-hmm. the weapons and, and some of this melee stuff, and riding around on horses. It looks in, engaging, but my one hurdle for any Battlefield game is the way that it controls. And I know some people don't understand it, Briar. You know exactly what I mean. I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, it's it's one of those situations where I just can't I can't wrap my head around. I can't go from playing Titanfall, Destiny, Call of Duty, and then go to Battlefield. It's like the one the that stands slower, out. It's slower it's experience. It's so different for me. Yeah. I know some people in the, in the comments are like, Beastly, you just don't get it. I'm sorry. I don't. But, yeah, they showed some uh, live gameplay of Battlefield 1. Uh, some celebrities came in there. Lube Fiasco, Wiz Khalifa. If we can call these guys celebrities. Snoop Dogg. Snoop, Snoop Dogg, Dogg in came too. in there. Yeah. And they came in and they, they went in a 64 
player versus uh, uh, lobby. So it was uh, 32 players each, and it actually worked, and I didn't see any hiccups. So That's great. Hopefully they're working on their servers. They don't want another Battlefield 4 situation. Uh, I'm not buying this like- game day one, I'll tell you that. But if mm-hmm. it comes out and people say, yeah, it's working great, I, I'm, I'm really interested because it looks yeah. phenomenal. And like the setup of the World War One thing, like that's fresh, that's original. Like I'm really looking forward to it. I and I hear what you're what you're saying about the Battlefield gameplay. I did start to get used to it with Battlefield Four. I for the first year though, I never felt like they really had fixed that game, like made it right. Um, yeah. But I did end up enjoying it, like running around with assault assault rifles and SMGs in close quarters battles. Like it, I kind of I enjoyed it. Right. So. I, I'm hoping that they launch this thing right this time, and you know it's a platform they can build on because the game looks sweet. Yeah, it looks it, it stunning. Is. That yeah, gameplay was amazing. That live stream today, right. oh my god, I was like, I'm sold. It looks so good. Yeah, I'm completely yeah, I mean, down to play this. I can't wait. I just want it to launch well. I do too. Yeah. yeah. So, so Robbie, overall, how would you rate the uh, the uh, conference today? EA's E3 conference. And if I had to score it, I would give it, I think, a 5 out of 10. Because it wasn't... Oh. I don't want to say it was bad. <laughs> it wasn't good, though. A there 5 out of 10 isn't liked. bad? <laughs> All right. It's not, it's not good Titanfall either. 2 was good. I was excited yeah. about that. Wish they'd shown more. Mass Effect Andromeda, I like the trailer they've shown. Battlefield 1, obviously. Love that. Yeah. Other than that, you know, it was sports games. Star Wars Fate was looked. supremely disappointing. If you're a FIFA fan, you're probably excited about that. If you're a Madden fan, maybe you like that, maybe you didn't. Yeah. They didn't really show oh. anything for Madden, though, yeah. other than the competitions. I would probably have to say around a six, Robbie. I mean, yeah. that was my original thought, that it wasn't anything special. It you wasn't tweeted horrible. me when it was over. You're like, that was dog shit. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm you keeping it real. I mean, I was I, reading I, your I, tweets. I, yeah, I you guys like were I not fell impressed. Asleep. <laughs> by, by the end of the conference, I swear, I was like more tired than I was when it started. I was like, this is bullshit. Yeah, you, know, you were. Upset. I gotta go do the Beastly Thoughts show so I can wake the fuck up. You know, <laughs> one of those situations. Yeah. Uh, I feel bad for E3's conference today, uh, and I look forward to seeing what Ubisoft, Sony, and Microsoft have to offer in the in the coming hours. And Bethesda tonight. Oh at, shit, uh, Bethesda. Yeah. Hopefully, well, I think they're probably gonna do a little bit better than EA because uh, they don't do nothing but sports games. So they got yeah. some good stuff coming. I'm excited. So we yeah, do I have overall, a- like the EA conference was fine. You know, the only thing that frustrated me was that they're like, we have more coming. Stay tuned. That was yeah, the frustrating yeah. part. But Bethesda will be great tonight. And then we have Microsoft, Ubisoft and Sony tomorrow. What like, makes all Bethesda the rest of the so great? Like, what are you expecting to see at Bethesda? That's I have so no amped. clue what he's talking about. The only thing I, I'm, I'm thinking they might show is the Evil Within 2 and possibly Skyrim Remastered. Wolfenstein sequel. Skyrim. I think that's definitely going to happen. Yeah, I would expect to see a Wolfenstein yeah. sequel. I like the Wolfenstein. I'm not going to like have a you know, shit fit about a sequel for it, though. Oh, I will. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Brian, Skyrim so. Remastered, I certainly won't get excited about. Me neither, you, know, you can but... just play it on PC, <laughs> put a bunch right. of mods on it, and you've got Skyrim Remastered. Right? Like, what are they going to do? I want to backtrack to what you said a few moments ago, Briar. I would pay money to see you have a shit fit. How does that even start? <laughs> Briar shit Mostly fit. there's, like, some jiggling. It's kind of... We know how that happens. Well, I, I think that uh, when it comes to Bethesda, I think that the most exciting things about their conferences is stuff that we don't know. Absolutely. Uh, because right now we've got a few little games rolling around the back of our head, and the fact that they're coming to E3 again lets us know that they do have something to show us. So. They have something to announce. Is, is Dishonored 2 coming? Is Bethesda yeah, yeah. Dishonored 2? Yeah. Okay, they, that's pretty big. There's going to be lots mm-hmm. of gameplay of that. Yeah, it's coming November, so... Yeah, because last last time they only showed us the pre rendered, um, you know, intro of her running around, which of course it's CG. But right. They announced the game, so they weren't going to show gameplay. Now, now you know the gamers and people who love Dishonored will now finally see what the shit's going to be about. So that's exciting news. And of course, tomorrow is the big day. Unfortunately, I'll be at work. Yeah. When Microsoft is going, uh, so I'm going to come home tomorrow. I want to watch this, you know, a later stream of it lie because people have been begging me to do reactions i don't know why um but uh, wanna... based on your uh final fantasy 7 reaction last year that was awesome <laughs> man that was so good uh, it was good but you know you can only have final fantasy remastered or remake 
once. Can't do it twice. Right. So, yeah, I'm looking forward. The next couple of days are going to be exciting. You know, I'm clenching my wallet and praying to the gods of gaming that I'm able to do this. I'm, I'm interested still- in Microsoft because I want to see what games are coming out, right? Like, obviously, I want to see what they, they, they talk about for games. But I really want to see how they handle this Xbox Slim... We didn't talk about Scorpio. Scorpio, right? Like, I want to see how they're going to talk about this. Because they got, in my opinion, they got a fucking problem on their hands. And I just well, want to I see mean, how they're going to approach it. Just, you know, a few hours ago on NeoGAF, uh, there was an image of the uh, Xbox One Right, Slim. there was a leak called, of the, the what it looks it's like. It's the ES. It's the Xbox One S. Uh, and this thing is 40% smaller than the original Xbox. It does support 4K video. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they didn't. It has a two terabyte hard drive. Yeah, that's two, nice. So uh, still a you know, disk drive, it, which I'm glad to see. Well, if that yeah it does have a disk drive, I'm curious as to whether or not it's going to be cheaper than the one that they have now. I don't know. It how better be. Gonna, well, how it's not going to come with a connect. It's not going to come with the HDMI input and all of the TV features. You think that'll cut down the price? I think that'll uh, cut down the price. They also right have now it's it's two ninety nine. That's the base price. Well, the they H- can release the Slim for two ninety nine. Don't you think? Possibly. I mean, it has uh, a bigger hard drive. It's got 4K video. Those are two uh, big features. It's going to be hard, Briar. I mean, it doesn't. It, it, I can see them. It's not the size of a small piece. couch. <laughs> <laughs> or a VCR from the right. 80s. Yeah. A small couch. I'm sitting <laughs> on my Xbox One right now. Uh, that thing is pretty big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I actually looked at I, it the other day. I'm like, that thing is huge. Yeah. Well, was, it actually is know, pretty big. I uploaded a video about this right before the show, and I was looking at my Xbox One when I was talking about it, and it is pretty damn big. I'd be so to see it. I'd be it's stoked to see an yeah. Xbox One that's 40% smaller, man. Yeah, I will say this, bro. Damn big. The thing is fucking quiet. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. It's got that big muffin forward, fan uh, on the top of it, man, and it is, it is whisper quiet, and I like that about it. Well, another good thing about the the uh, Xbox One S is that the power brick is now inside the console. I, so, that never bugged me as much. I, I know everybody like got all upset well, it, about it. It is but... it is pretty fucking big, bro. That it thing is, is, is large. <laughs> you can like you knock know? someone out with that thing. Like you can swing it, and honestly, man, you have some issues. <laughs> earlier today, I was re- moving some VCR tapes around because now I, I'm converting VCR my old tapes to yeah. uh, MP4, and two of them fell behind the TV. Boom, boom. And I moved some shit, and I got down and looked, and I went to grab it, and it was the Xbox One block. I was like, fuck, this thing is big. I thought it was two You were reaching down things. on the ground to grab it, and then you realized it fell up on the it fell on the Xbox One block. So you're like, oh, let me grab that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is pretty big. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be exciting to see what they do and what price point they're going to hit. I am, I'm guessing, guys, it's going to be, I would guess, 329 I think oh, you think they're going to release the Slim for more than they're, they're selling the Xbox One for? I think that they feel... Look, Briar, this is not the older old days, man. They're changing everything. They're fucking releasing updates to consoles no, man, now they in years. They're going to sell it for 300 There's no way they're going to sell it for more than what they're selling it for now. Well, I mean, they could justify... How can they justify with that, that with, a new, with a new console coming out next year? I'm just telling you how I feel, man. No way. <laughs> I'm just telling you how no I feel. No way. I don't... I'm seeing, I'm seeing that 4K video playback. Yeah. I'm seeing that uh, two, two terabyte, terabyte hard drive. drive. Okay. Yeah. And right there are reasons that Microsoft could keep the price where it is now or possibly go. What the hell are you doing, Brian? <laughs> Guys, can I mention something quick? Yeah. Because there are leaks that actually are coming out. I just realized this. There was a leak that said it'll be 449. What? One of the skews. No. I'm not kidding you. Yeah. I don't know if that's true no or not, way. but that's what it says. There's no the way saying now. it too. I'm sorry. No way. It's Brian's not going to be 450. Slap, Brian's going to slap you it's with expensive. his dick, man. Yeah. There's no way. <laughs> Briar's not yeah. having it, man. We'll why see. would they we'll do that? Like, logically, why on earth would you do that when you have another console? You have a brand new console coming out next year. Yeah, I hope it's not 449, but... I wouldn't release I it. If, if I couldn't release that thing for $300, I wouldn't release it. So you're saying three hundred dollars? That's the the highest you see them releasing it at right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I we'll don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I think it's you know, it's we'll... a fucking dumbass move if they do anything other than that. Well, I mean, you gotta look at the history of the Xbox. They've they've been known to do some fucking dumbass shit in the past. Um. So we'll see tomorrow. At least we don't have. A well, lot I mean, of you're a Sony there. fanboy, but there's a lot of people who's watched <laughs> who've actually bought three sixties and watched the price go down over time. 
you got to look at their long term business outlook, man. If they if they try and come out this year selling a four hundred and fifty dollar Xbox One, and then want consumers to come back next year and buy the Scorpio, there's no way. Huh. That's just It'll stupid. It'll not be four forty nine. I agree. It's with not going to be four fifty. That's not even. That's that's almost as much as it launched for three years ago. Yeah, it was yeah. four ninety nine to launch. That and it's not going to come like with the Connect. It's not coming with all that TV bullshit. The thing's got to be cheaper to make now, right? Because it's got the same graphics card, the same processor. So mm. it's got to be cheaper to put those parts together. What if they announce uh, tomorrow that the GPU is stronger than the, the original Xbox Ones? Do you think that could justify a price hike of maybe twenty to thirty dollars? No, they cannot more raise the price sure, here. I don't know. They cannot okay, so raise the price. Brian, we're a team of gamers here, and we can all agree to disagree. I'm going. Uh, three, I'm going three twenty nine. Brian, uh, Robbie, what are you going at? Eight hundred three forty nine. You're going three forty nine. Next week we'll be we'll back. See. The whole we'll chat talk. is being like, Brian, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. dropping a bit. I think we'll be okay. All right, so that's that's the, our thoughts on the E3 stuff. We do have a Hold little on, bit of I want to talk about, because we, we got the Sony conference coming up, too, tomorrow. And I got to talk oh, yeah. about that. Because yes. they, they have now announced that they're not going to talk about the Neo. Nope. Yep. So they better have some games. Because if they're going to announce a Neo, if they're going to announce a Neo, they're saying Gamescom now, right? If they're going to announce that at Gamescom, that's in August? Yeah. And their excuse for not not showing it at E3 is because they they don't have any games ready for it, right? That's what Andrew House said. Yeah, he said we want to make sure we have enough. I think things lined up to show with it or something. So that clearly means yeah, they weren't. That's ready a, to show, they I missed guess. a big opportunity to get that thing out in front of people at E3. Yeah, but Andrew House could also be spinning it. You know, Sony knows now that Microsoft is working on uh, an, a PlayStation 4K competitor that, from rumors, can at least uh, beat, I mean, work. You're gonna blow it out side. of the water. That yeah, it has the Scorpio. I mean, the power. what the rumors are. The Scorpio is like, it's gonna six be terif- incredible. Six teraflops yeah. of power versus the four of the PlayStation 4K. So maybe sense. they're pulling it back. Maybe they're pulling back to to see you know how valid these rumors are and to see whether or not they have the how can how capable- quick can we get a bunch of 1080s? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Put yourself in Sony's position. Do you want to lose this lead? Do you want to see that? No, man, I picture? absolutely don't. But you, I mean, they, they a huge opportunity lost here. Not not yeah. showing this thing off at E3, and the longer they wait, the more the rumors of the Scorpio are going to eat into their Neo sales, right? Because mm-hmm. if everybody Could knows be. that xbox has a new more powerful console coming out next year how many people are going to buy this one this year especially when you can already play all those games on your current ps4 yeah Yeah. i don't know it's it's a strange time to be a gamer it's an awesome time to be a gamer this is like the shit that gets me like (laughs) keeps me up at night like "Mm, (laughs) what are they gonna do (laughs) me too (laughs) like i'm really looking forward to there's actually uh Apple's having a press conference tomorrow too, <laughs> so I got they three of them really? lined up. Yeah, yeah. And PCs having a conference as well. That's the other thing. Like there are so many. Yeah, this, that's nuts. Those two, those two press conferences are going to be very exciting to watch, just because I want to know how they're going to handle all this. You know. Well, yeah. When it, when it comes to Sony, they like you said, Brian, they better come with games because some of the biggest and heaviest hitters that people have been anticipating have gotten pushed back. They did and it last year. That, yeah. I mean, now with this is our first little bit of news. Horizon Zero Dawn has been delayed till February 28, twenty seventeen. Mm-hmm. That's a game that a lot of people were excited about this year, and we're that's anticipating... not a big delay. February though, that's not bad. No. Yeah, could be worse. I mean, definitely. it, it, it would have been the end of the year, you know, but it's still a delay. So they got to have some some really exciting IP that people haven't seen in a while. I mean, Sony has basically been sitting on a back catalog of games that we haven't seen this generation. So if they if they were to come out with maybe a resistance game, please. I wouldn't be surprised okay. to see him see him drop some bombs. I mean they they came out of the gates hard last year, and they had a hell of an E three lineup. And to be honest with you, they have enough first and third party stuff that they could pull out. And it, you know 
it's been weird this E3, right? Because it feels like everything has been leaked already. Yeah. We already oh, know yeah. everything that's coming out. But, you know, maybe Sony's just holding on to those things. It'd be awesome. It'd be awesome. It'd be a fun conference to watch. Yeah, well, I'm definitely going to be uh, checking that out. Uh, Microsoft's conference is tomorrow morning. Sony's is tomorrow. I'm trying to remember. Is it at 9 o'clock? 9 o'clock for uh, 6, six yep. Pacific. Yeah, so uh, that'll be interesting, man. And it's been a year, and I'm excited to do this. Yeah, Sony's always be got the benefit of watching Microsoft's press conference too, and yeah. be able to react to it. How does that always? How does that always happen? Who is? I don't know. If I was excited? if I was at Microsoft, I'd be like, "Hey, let's start swapping this thing every let's year." Go last. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the third year in a row in a row that Microsoft went hours before Sony, yeah. giving Sony all the ability to wind up and try to knock them out. Right. Come on. I mean, and on top of that, what do gamers gamers remember the most? The thing they saw last. Mm -hmm, if you true. watch three yep. conferences, you're going to remember the one you just saw. And so Sony is going, we're going to put your ass to sleep. When you watch our shit, you're going to bed. You're going to have a dream about the PlayStation games you saw. You're not going to remember what you saw when you I, had I did last year. And frankly, the year before that was the year that they said, oh, and by the way, you can download the Destiny Alpha in two days and start playing yeah. it. Like, yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, Sony's been dropping really good press conferences for two years. Three years. Last year was like I think Megaton the, bombs. Yeah. The one before nice. that was PS4, where they said, oh, yeah, they, fuck those guys over at Xbox. We're not going to have DRM. Yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> like, so they've been killing it now for three years in a row. This is so I'm really sure. looking this forward to seeing what they got, they got up their sleeves. They've had oh, amazing yes. conferences ever since the PS4 launched. Like you talk about, yeah, 2013, mm -hmm. the price, the no DRM, yeah. always online and stuff like that. Uh, last year, they had like The Last Guardian, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Shenmue. Shenmue. Like, that was uh, nuts. That was nuts. Back it was to back. insane. Yeah. I couldn't so, even like, wipe the tears away fast enough. I was so fucked up. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, it was insane. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, I don't know if they'll top it this year, but I'm sure they've got a lot of I'm looking lot of forward to seeing them stuff. try, man. <laughs> yeah. We'll see what they start with, too. Because if they start with something like The Last Guardian again, it's going to be a good conference. Mm, okay. All right, guys. So we got a little bit of news to cover. we got just a few minutes. So let's get, get through this. Saints Row Developer Volition has announced their next game, Agents of Mayhem. Mm -hmm. And I have not seen this. Why don't you elaborate, Mr. Robbie Skull? So... I gotta admit, I did not like the trailer. It was really corny and looked really dumb. But this it is looks sort of like Saints That's the thing. It is like a spiritual successor to Saints Row. Yeah. So right there could be awesome. And it's the same people. It's Volition. I'm looking forward to it just based on that. But yeah, we'll have to see. I never really got into the Saints Row game, so I, I guess I'll give it a give it a look and see. They're fun but as hell. They're fun. They're like a zany, insane GTA. You know, just. Just mindless fun, crazy shit. But I never really got into it. So, Dead Rising. Uh, so what, Robbie? Are you there, Robbie? Robbie's blinking out. Dead Rising Four is leaked ahead of an announcement at E3 oh, 2016. I'm good. The game will supposedly be a reboot of the story from Red, Red uh, Dead Rising One, and will be announced Monday at the Microsoft press conference. It will be available for Xbox One and Windows 10. Windows 10 is taking all the exclusives. You three that leaky pipe, it's just leaking left and right and left and right. Oh, <laughs> so good. I, I, I did a video about this. Are you guys excited? Is this going to be an exclusive to Xbox One? Dead Rising Sounds 4? like they got another exclusive. Are they doing yeah. this again? Wow. Way to go, Microsoft. Procure that fucking Capcom money. Shit. Or at least <laughs> give Capcom a bag of money yourself. Yeah, right. <laughs> it, it does look good. Uh, I don't know if it... I was looking at the images. I don't know if it is Frank West. They say it is him. It looks like a new guy to me. Uh, and graphically, it does look like, you know, what we see in modern console hardware now. So I don't know, man, if it's a if it's a reboot or not. Dead Rising 4 is definitely happening. The images are confirmed. So look forward to seeing that, I guess, in the morning, guys. You guys Dead Rising fans? Not really. But I like the first that one. I thought it was pretty fun. I didn't play much of the second one. That's yeah. the one I played. The Dead third Rising one? 2. Wait, is, is there three of them? Well, there's, there's one on the Wii, too. There's one on the Wii, too. One of them came out for Xbox One right off the gate. Yeah, launch. Yeah. That was part was that three. Two? That was part three. That was three. Okay. Yeah. I liked that, but I didn't finish it. Like, it was just kind of a fun, like, like mayhem simulator, which I, yeah, you yeah. know, I do dig, but I, I didn't stick with it. Wasn't that great of a game. I didn't like it, to be honest, but I'm always willing to give it a chance, you know? I don't know. Man, it's made in Vancouver. That's pretty cool. So, you know, <laughs> Canadian. It's, it's awesome. I'll okay. And it. 
Industry insider Shinobi602 has teased several announcements to come at E3 2016, including a possible Skyrim remaster. Prey yep. 2 will be back with a different title and possible sequels to both Wolfenstein, The New Order, and The Evil Within. Please, Wolfenstein. Please. Oh, my God. I want that so badly. I want that you guys, so badly. You guys badly. think I'm kidding, man. I would like to see that Skyrim remaster. I really, really want to see that. And, of course, I know, Briar... I have a nice PC. I can play it on my PC now, but I'm not a PC guy. I have it on PC. I would like yeah. to see. Yeah. Yeah, you told us about it. You were fine. That, and I want to see what they're going to do with um, uh, The Evil Within. Because The Evil Within had lots of problems. The game. was in play style and play mechanics. It felt like maybe a PlayStation 2 game, the way you controlled it and the way it felt. So I want to see, you know, how they're moving forward with the development of that and if it's if it's truly next gen the next time it comes around. So I'll be excited to see that. was good. We'll see. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty good game. Uh, you know, I did I did review it uh, two years ago, and it was it was pretty good. NetherRealm Studios has announced Injustice 2, which is going to be the shit, a sequel to the fighting game Injustice Gods Among Us. It will release on, in March of 2017 for PS4 and Xbox One. Did Very you guys excited. Have, you guys yes. get a chance to play that game? The first one? No, uh, I did didn't. Did you yeah. ever download all right, hold on, guys. This isn't board. working was, out. Uh, hold on. I'm restarting the call. Yeah, the call's okay. getting really choppy. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to restart the call, see if we can get a, a slightly better issues. experience here. All right, we'll see if that's any better. Did you guys? Did we right. we Everybody good? hang up. You got to all hang up. Okay. Hey. All right, let's see if this is any better. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> let's hope to God everything's okay now. Yeah. Just... Welcome to episode 113. <laughs> <Shit goes> <laughs> let's just restart it. I've been playing Quantum yeah. Break, and we just restarted time. So what have you guys been playing this week? <laughs> All right. All right. So... Not restart. Come on. <laughs> Where uh, were Briar, we? Briar, did you ever get a chance to play? Uh, did you ever get a chance to download the free Injustice Gods Among Us. It was on PlayStation Plus. No, I never year. checked that game out. Uh, it looked cool. I'm not a huge comic it's... book fan. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it looked good. I know a lot of fighting game like fans are really into it still. So I'm sure a lot of people are excited for this. But I, it's just not not for me. The yeah. thing that really tripped me out about that, and pretty much what NetherRealm has been doing, NetherRealm Studios is headed by Ed Boon. If you guys have played Mortal Kombat 2, his face is on the trees in the background. That's mm -hmm. And uh, he, the handsome devil there. Uh, what they've been doing with these games is kind of crafting seminal single player uh, experiences that force you to play as different characters. So they started off with Mortal Kombat 9, where the single player game you started, you start off as a certain character, you fight two or three enemies, and you have to switch to another one because the, the story arc ch ch changes and you're forced to see it from a different perspective. That really blew my mind, especially playing that game through to completion how they made a Mortal Kombat story better than any of the films, and quite frankly, better than any Mortal Kombat story. They did the same thing with Injustice Gods Among Us, where you can't really play a single player and play through the entire game as one character. You mm -hmm. have to, you know, you have to switch from character to character every few fights to see the story progress. And that story was damn good. It was really they could have made the Batman v Superman movie. They could have just did the Injustice story, and it would have been awesome. Uh, but I'm looking forward to seeing what they're doing here. I think uh, NetherRealm is kind of becoming uh, synonymous with single-player fighting game storylines because they, they automatically, you know they craft great playing fighting games, but now they're kind of raising the bar and, and giving us stories that really make us kind of uh, connect with some of these fighting characters. So right. I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to that. Me too. Yeah, Mortal Kombat X was awesome. And like Injustice was really good. I played that too. I mean, this will be really good. NetherRealm was amazing at what they do. All right, so continuing on, I don't know who Shinobi602 is, but this he's a hell of a guy. Shinobi602 is back with more teases, this time saying God of War 4 announcement is likely to happen at Sony's E3 press conference tomorrow night. Ooh, I hope so. Yes. God of War 4, but I guess it's not going to be 4K. Hey, so um, you guys, Briar, God of War has never really been your your thing, right? You said the I, first loved, couple of I actually love the first two. Like, I really dug up a lot. Um 
Then I played, I think, the PSP one, and I was like starting to fall apart, just fall off of it a little bit. And then three came out, and I still liked it, but it was like, all right, this series is done. It's run its course. Yeah, yeah it's way too much. Let's just hold yeah. it back. Well, I, I think that you know one of the things that we all know is that they've heard this this argument, and it's it's a loud majority saying that. Yeah, that Kratos is kind of floating in the same. It just space. felt like the same shit every time. So. Like if they're gonna reboot it, they gotta do like Norse mythology. Or they got they gotta do something different with it, right? A new character, like new mythology. I'm still okay with like the epic, huge boss fights battles, and like yeah. yeah, but like I'm done with the chain whips. I'm done with Kratos. Like we gotta switch it up here. Well, I hope the they thing, do something different. The yeah. thing is, they they really can't change Kratos because if that was to happen, it would kind of remove the validity of the character up until this I'm, point. I, I, so, see, then I'm done because if they don't yeah. switch it up, man, I'm I'm like oh, I'm done with Kratos. Like I'm done with Hades. Like, you know, like it's angry Hades. motherfucker getting pissed it's off. Like, just like how many? Everyone, like what's his issue? <laughs> like I, I'm done with his storyline. How much more can they add to his storyline? He's such a one-dimensional character to begin with. You know, like. I would I like know. to see a new character take the helm of the Yeah, me too. Series. Totally. And, and they can even with... call him Kratos. I don't give a shit what they call him. <laughs> but just have somebody new and, like, don't make his ash, his wife and children's ashes smeared all around his body. Like, do something <laughs> different, please. Because I swear to God, like, I, we heard that story of what happened to him in, like, every one of those games, and it just got real repetitive at the end. The, the yeah. one thing that I hope they don't change is all the the boobies. There's lots of titties in those games. Oh, that's uh, sexist. Yeah, it was. It's so gratuitous, Robbie. It's just not good. Um, but I want a character that actually has layers. Uh, Kratos doesn't really have layers. There's like two layers to the guy. You peel off one, and that's the other Onions one. Are like layers. No. Yeah, I mean, I, I want a character that you can kind of relate to, and Kratos isn't that one. Aren't, and I don't get that reference. <sighs> yes, I got the reference, Robbie. Shrek. Okay. So. Continuing on with our last little bit of news, a release date for ReCore has leaked ahead of the announcement at Microsoft's E3 press conference. What's ReCore? It's the re ReCore of the core. It's the game that um, what's his name? Uh, Metal. I mean, um, Mega Man. I'm trying to think. Keiji Inafune and, Afune and Afune. Armature are developing this game. It's X Metroid Prime devs are working on this. It's the game where the girl was really? walking with a robot dog, and the dog had that little core of light inside of it. Yeah, and they were in the she, desert. She was, she was in the desert inside of like a catacomb, and then these people came in there to attack her. And she took the core out of the dog and threw it into a robot that was just dead. And that robot came to life and had the essence of the dog. So basically, you take that core and you put it into whatever is in the the game to help you, you know, get to where you need to be. It looks exciting. I, I like these kind of games coming to Xbox One, and uh, it looks like it's going to be released September thirteenth, twenty sixteen, for the Xbox One and for PC. TBD. There has to be gameplay tomorrow. Yeah, there must be. Yeah, well, uh, I, I think it's exciting. I, I'm right now. This is my favorite time to be a gamer in the whole year. I remember back in the day there were only yeah. two video game conferences all year. Now there are like literally nine or ten. Well, you get all the packs. Packs. Um, uh, and now news actually happens at the game developer Paris game Com. week. Yeah, Gamecom, Tokyo Game Show. Yep. PlayStation Game Experience Game. now. Like yeah. we got a lot of them. There's a lot. Yeah, so that is and then, the news. Plus, all, everybody's pulling out of E3 anyway and doing their own thing. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, not so like ahead of time. Yeah. Now, now, I'm just curious, because I don't follow Nintendo probably like I'd like to. What is Nintendo's deal with this year's E3? Are they going to be there at the show, or are they going to do a Nintendo Direct? What they're are they doing uh, have the Direct. Zelda. Yeah, yeah and they're they have gonna... a Treehouse Live. So they're, they're... going to do the Direct. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be uh, mostly Zelda. I think they're going to show off early Pokemon stuff. I'm not sure. I think Sun and Moon. Yeah, they're going to show. Oh, that's about it, though. They're I'm just they're really gearing up for next year. I think like that's yeah. They need to knock it out of the park next year. They're in trouble. They're waiting to set up an X. How like, long? Really well. How long can their mobile division really support that company? Right in the face of mobile phones. Yeah. Like how can that keep going in the face of the iPhone and Android? Well, um, I was looking at uh, VG charts last night, and the 3DS was the the second best-selling uh, piece of video game hardware last month, followed mm -hmm. by the PlayStation 4, and then then the Xbox One was behind that. So the 3DS is still That's what I'm saying, moving. though, is like, how long can that keep going for? I don't know. I mean, like as long as people keep having kids. In a world with iPads and, and iPhones and all these, like, you know, tech devices in everybody's pocket, like, how, how long can you just buy, like, a, a portable device like that just meant for video games alone? 
yeah. I, you know what? I think that I think the, the kids like him. Every kid in my house has one. My my older yeah. son, uh, he turned fifteen on June second. We went to Ohio and he lost his three DS in, in about fourteen games. Mm-hmm. I told you guys about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and so on his birthday, he asked for another one. So he's got the, another three DS XL and some games to play on that. And he's got tablets. He's got an iPad. He's got uh, an Android phone. He played goose around on that stuff, but he wanted Monster Hunter Four Ultimate. And he wanted some other games, and he wanted his 3DS. These kids just love yeah. that thing. Parents have to. We have to fucking follow it. Maybe you know, your son. Your maybe son comes now, and says, but I don't know, it. man. Like c- going into the future, just I just see it like moving past, like having like a device that just plays video games. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if you want to get technical, the 3DS does play more than video games, but it, it is much more cumbersome than you know other traditional means like tablets, phones, and course yeah. you know, consoles but it does do more but i think nintendo is working on the uh successor to the 3ds they have to be with this nx i think or will, mh is the code name yeah, for the supposed the mh whatever that is is going to be you know the the successor to the 3ds and it's going to hopefully trump it in everything it does and and even more connectability all, all i want is, is i want both of those things to tie into the same store so if you cross by let's say um Mario Brothers Three, you get it on both your console and your your handheld. That I, I hope that is. Yeah, and then is. I want it to be powerful enough, though. That isn't going to happen now, especially with the new consoles coming out from Sony and Xbox. I want it to be powerful enough to get cross-platform games over there. Yeah. And then obviously I want Nintendo to start releasing some but, fucking games. But yeah. but Briar, Briar, they still might be powerful enough. The thing is supposed to be as powerful as the Xbox One. Right. And, yeah, and, but the new Xbox One is going to be. A third as po- powerful as the new new Xbox One. <laughs> yeah, but all the games on the, <laughs> the old new, Xbox One are still going to play on the new. Yeah, as but long as uh, come on, man! Like, it. if they release another console that's like significantly behind the, what Sony and Xbox are doing, it's going to be another toy for kids. Yeah, but if if they're using the x86 architecture and they're using the similar hardware to the current PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, there shouldn't be any issue porting those games over to it. We have no evidence they're going to use x86 architecture. That's why I said if. Yeah. I mean, they, they could be using cartridge-based architecture. We don't we won't know until they release it. But could if be that bag is of dick architecture, who knows? <laughs> big bag of dicks everywhere. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess it's all oh, rumor boy. and conjecture at this I point. I think but, uh, Sony copyrighted that with the PS3. Huh? The bag, bag of dick architecture. <laughs> you got that right. That's, 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 <laughs> it was yeah, but shitty. If, yeah. if it's x86, which I hope it is, because if it's not, they're shooting themselves in the foot, then they have a great possibility of getting uh, third-party support. It won't be hard for developers to port games over to their console. If they want to create this taco-shaped engage cartridge that goes in there, then developers are not going to want to fuck with them. And yeah. Nintendo has to know that. Everybody's telling Nintendo that. We're they screaming at them. Like, you have to do this, 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 and we know. I, they I, have I to hope. They, they got new management. They got new leadership. Hopefully, new, the new leadership, you know, listens to the consumers and the people who are the lifeblood of the company. I want to I want to support Nintendo. I want to play my Wii U, but it just doesn't have anything that's really resonating with me. I want the yeah. NX to be awesome. I want the new handheld to be incredible. But I, only if they don't just, just do fucking Pokemon games. I want something that's going to engage me at 36 years old. I want something, you know, something that's made for people who grew up with Nintendo. I remember being five years old playing my Nintendo. They just haven't realized that we've grown up. They're treating everybody like we're fucking comic book characters. We're not the same age anymore. For us, want, there want... was one game that came out for the current console for the Wii U that was worth picking up, right? There was one yeah. game, maybe two. And that was Bayonetta. And Bayonetta. for me, Mario Maker was worth the purchase. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for me, like, Sm- uh, Smash Brothers. I got we've you. Just though. aged out of Nintendo, and like they have not done a good job of keeping people who grew up on Nintendo active Nintendo consumers. Where Xbox and PlayStation are just like stealing their lunch. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of that, I'm sending you Bayonetta. I got to send that to you. All right. so you can, uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll get through the details after the show. But I'm sending you that. You got to play it at some point. I just mean, don't put it next me. to Far Cry Four. As far as the Wii U goes, like the only real games I felt satisfied with, like purchasing a Wii U for, would be Mario Kart 8, yeah, and um, Mario Maker. Like that's it, really. I mean, there just isn't much to really justify it. So I don't know. It's just it, it, it's the sad case. I know there are games where people really, you know, out there, Splatoon. People really like that game. There are uh, great games uh, for sure, but there's just Toad Treasure enough. Tracker, 
treasure tracker. But you're right. You know, I don't buy a console just for the possibility of having six good games. Yeah. I yeah. want a console that has many. You know, I want a plethora of games that I can choose from. And I, I want many different genres. Every Nintendo console, I think, except for the GameCube at launch. And I'm not buying this one on launch. Mm. You it almost you doesn't still... matter what they say before it launches. I'm gonna see I wanna see the game that I, I need for it. Yeah, I gotta wait and see on this too. After the Wii U buying it at launch, like I just I gotta wait on this one. Well, the the, I, the only Nintendo uh console that I wanted at launch, I didn't get it, was the sixty four. And the reason being is I actually walked into a Blockbuster video. For you young guys, Blockbuster video used to be Netflix. I remember Jesus Blockbuster. Hell. <laughs> they used to sell these black things. They were like cartridges, mm-hmm. and they had these reels Spinning, on them. Yeah. And in between the reels, there's tape. And you yeah. put those tapes into this thing that looked like an Xbox One. Yeah. <laughs> and it would, remember those? it would put images up on your TV. But yeah. your TV, it looked like a microwave oven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some of them were floor models. Yeah. Um, I went into a Blockbuster video, and uh, I picked up the, the Nintendo 64 controller. And it kind of broke through a wall in my mind, controlling Mario in 3D space like that. Yeah, was that was an incredible game. It. it was. It blew my mind. I need a 3D Mario game. I need to see real evolution of the series. You know, I think Nintendo honestly has just been cashing in on the Mario name lately. You know, all these 3DS games. Mario and... Maker's fantastic, man. I'm no, sorry. no, no, I'm not talking Mario about Mario Maker's Maker. fantastic. I haven't played. I haven't played that one. I'm talking about the five different 3DS games I have for my daughters. That all have Mario's name on it. It's almost like Mario 3D World, 3D this, 3D that. Yeah. I want a whole, a real, true to life 3D Mario experience. And uh, if the, the NX has that at launch, that'll be probably my reason to grab one. Oh, the chat's just like, oh yeah, Blockbuster, <laughs> making fun of the kids and stuff. <laughs> hey man, I'm Blockbuster, old Blockbuster used to be the shit. every Friday. Oh. Yeah. I, I used to have a girlfriend who had a Blockbuster video that would fucking deliver. How sweet is that? What? Yeah. (laughs) Her local blockbuster would deliver. So you could call them up, tell them what movies you wanted to see, and they'd bring them to your house. Wow. That's cool. Yeah, it was that was before pay per view though. So like now that's no big deal. Of course you could do that. Who cares? Yeah. Back then. Wow. There's like two blockbusters left, man. it's just crazy. I think one's in Indiana and I don't know where the other one's at, but I would pay money just to go there and walk through that shit. Now they got DVDs and Blu-rays everywhere, Briar. Can you imagine that? Yeah. I used to go inside. Block- Blockbuster used to rent PlayStation 1s. Mm-hmm. You could go yeah. inside there and rent a fucking console. That was just insane. These kind of things don't exist anymore. I You're closed down a on. Blockbuster once at my old job. They sent me in there to uh, basically pull the servers out because the servers were new enough that they wanted to uh, repurpose them for something else. So I went in there. <clears throat> and I went into their like back office, and the whole place was cleared out. It was all disgusting in there. And I pulled <laughs> these servers out, and they had one of those sticky traps, you know, like those rat traps. Yeah. The thing was half stuck to a rat and half stuck to the server. I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> oh we ain't God. doing this. <laughs> wow. You can leave your rat trap blockbuster video fucking server here. <laughs> Oh, God. Well, look, guys, it looks like we're almost out of time. Uh, I look forward to this this E3, man. It's going to be really exciting. I'm sure we're all going to be in Twitter. You guys follow the three of us on Twitter so you can see the witty banter that goes back and forth. (laughs) But there's going to be be a ton of news. There's going to be some really exciting stuff. For the most part, I want to try to stay away from it because I got some live stuff that these people just want me to do. I don't know why. Everybody just hits me up in the comments. Beastly, please, please do the live. Yeah, the live reaction. Well, you can do it for Sony, definitely. Oh, yeah. 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 You'll just have uh, to stay away from Twitter until you get home to watch the Xbox One. Or do it on your lunch break. Yeah, Watch it on your phone. I'm 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 not going to fuck with Twitter at all tomorrow. I'm going to come home. My wife's already going to have the video ready for me to watch. I want to get naked and sit in front of the camera and want to go. Damn, what a good wife. Oh, that's great. You got that right. <laughs> All right, let's run this down real quick. Um, so tonight we have the Bethesda conference, which is seven o'clock yeah. my time or ten Eastern. So we mm-hmm. got that. You know, we'll expect a solder two. We'll see that. Some other announcements made for Machine Games or someone like that. Tomorrow at nine thirty, I believe it is my time. Twelve thirty Eastern, Eastern here is yeah. Microsoft. One o'clock Pacific slash four Eastern is Ubisoft, and then the night is over with Sony at six o'clock. 
Pacific and then nine, nine. Eastern. Should Ooh. be a good day, man. It's going to be awesome. Predictions. Who's going to win E3? Just based on the, the rumors that you feel in your heart now. I want to say Sony because I feel like they have some good first party stuff, but I don't know. I mean, I feel like Microsoft. I, I think it's, o- it's almost got to be Sony by default. I can't think of what Microsoft is going to do to make me happy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ubisoft the, you is a wild card. Um, they're kind of good and bad. They've been really good. They're a wild and, card. Yeah. Well, um, Ubisoft, they're going to come out and say, Vivendi owns us now. Everybody. Not shit like EA. Yeah, right. Have, yeah, a, that good, too. have a good day. <laughs> that's, I heard that's about true. that. Yeah, that's what they're going to do. They're going to walk out there and say, well, this is our last E3 press conference as Ubisoft for tomorrow will we be called Vivendi Soft. Yeah, I think uh, I think it'll probably be Sony. I, unless you unless think, Microsoft you think, has got something really special up its sleeve. I think that this Slim news could, could be exciting. I mean, depending on what's inside, what's in the box. How do you... What's in I the just, box? I'm so curious is how do you sell this Slim with the new Scorpio coming right after. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what the new controller is going to be like, to be honest with you. Yes, that's why that's why leaks are not good, man. Somebody leaked all this information and, and really thoroughly fucked Microsoft. Because if that hadn't been leaked, they were working on two. Oh, and they man. Just, yeah, that was... That, I'm sure Phil Spencer sitting money. in Washington right now just like, ugh, the leaks. He's probably... Yeah, I'm sure he's pretty upset about stuff like that. But it happens, you know? Like, all kinds of stuff has been leaked today, especially. There's been... So many leaks. Yeah. What yeah. if? What if the only way they could save it, Brian? This is how they could save it. Yeah. They come out on that stage tomorrow. They say this is our Xbox One S. This thing is smaller, quieter. It has 4K video capabilities, and this is our last Xbox One. Next year, we will be launching the Xbox Two. Mm-hmm. You think that? Have- <laughs> I've called Xbox Two. We could be launching the ninth generation of our consoles. You know what they should call it? The Xbox 361. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Right? (laughs) If if there's a prospect of this thing not being... (laughs) If there's a prospect of this This thing being the last Xbox One... The last Xbox One... I mean, the Xbox Two doesn't play Xbox One games... Possibly the Xbox the 361. There's too many fucking numbers here. I feel like we're in math class. What the hell is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Oh, man. That's... Xbox that's 361 so hype. 361 hype. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit, man! I think that's like the uh, you hear him laughing, got, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just 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 yeah, hold up yeah. a second, Bobby. Um, that's the only way that I think they could sell this thing is if they tell people this is the last Xbox One. They gotta mention is, it, right? Don't they? Yeah. I mean, people know about it. They gotta address it in some way. But what they if they say it. this is our, that's our ninth generation Xbox One? We're preemptively striking. Our competition, we're bringing out the Xbox, whatever it's called, next year. And this thing is going to be three times as powerful as the current Xbox One, and it'll be a completely new generation of games. Yeah, they got to they gotta say something. They, that could help them sell it. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Bro, All right, guys. So, I think that's going to do so it for the show. I, about it, man. I got <laughs> I to gotta get ready for Game of Thrones, man. Game of Thrones is tonight. We recorded the show an hour late, so that means I got less time to get ready for Game of Thrones. I got. I mean, I still I still got to fit my chest it. plate and my helmet and those <laughs> boots. I tell you, it takes me ten minutes just to lace up them boots. <laughs> I'm coming over again. You know what? Um, you got oh, we do started. Game of Thrones here. You got me started. Okay? It's time for me to start watching that damn show. Thanks everybody for watching the show. Yeah. I had a great time, man. This has been really fun speculating on all this stuff and yeah, talking excited. about talking about these conferences. EA could have done better, which they did, but uh, we still got four great conferences coming our way. So Absolutely. hit us up on Twitter, guys. And if you haven't followed Briar Rabbit's Twitch page, follow it now. This guy is amazing. He's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Look at it. He got the fresh haircut, green screen. Made me feel fucking bad when you I get came to be here. a part of the rabbit hole. Why wouldn't you want to join? You know, follow the channel. <laughs> watch, watch yourself on the That's way out, though. Might be a little sticky. Line, Briar. Join the ra- <laughs> part of the rabbit hole. Join the rabbit hole. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.
Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Game of Thrones.